Hello and welcome to Modern Construction Materials. Uh, I am Ravindra Getu. I am a professor of civil engineering at IIT Madras and uh, I have been teaching modern construction materials as a course at IIT since 2005. So, it is about 7 years since I have been teaching this course. Before I joined IIT Madras, I was a researcher and the head of a structures lab in Barcelona, Spain. And before that, I did my PhD at Northwestern University. I got my masters from Marquette University, again in the US. And my bachelor's degree is from the University of Madras. I studied in the Government College of Technology, Coimbatore. So, that is a little bit about my background. Uh, when I have the first class of this or any other course, I go through an exercise of trying to know the students better. And this is something that I would uh, suggest that teachers uh, follow. And we will try to do it uh, on video also. Let us see if it works. So, what I have uh, people do, uh, the people who are attending the class do is close their eyes for a minute, blank out everything, sort of I say reboot. And then uh, we will try to find out what the long term goals are of the people attending, that is the students and also what is the expectation from uh, this course. So, let us try it out even though you are not sitting in my class and you are in front of a computer or a TV screen, let us see if you can do this. So, you can uh, put the video on hold and close your eyes for a minute and blank out everything and then we will see what, uh, what you come up with in terms of your goals and your uh, objectives for this course. So, close your eyes for a minute you can put the video on hold and then you come back and uh, play it when you have blanked out everything. Okay. So, so you have done this. Now, again close your eyes and hopefully you have something that you can uh, write on. So, this time close your eyes for a minute or so. Again you can put the video on, uh, on pause and when you open your eyes write down what you think would make you happy to have achieved 10 years from now. So, 10 years from now what do you think you would be or you should be to have had a successful career. Okay? So, uh, close your eyes and do this and come back. Okay. So, when I do this in class, I have a range of answers from the students and uh, generally in the course on modern construction materials when I teach it, I have uh, M Tech students of building technology and construction management. I also have M Tech students from the program that we have with Larsen and Tubro, where we have students with some experience on site. So, slightly older students in the program of construction technology and management. Then we have some dual degree students that is the students who would be in the fourth or fifth year and uh, research scholars who are doing their MS and PhD. So, there is a range of uh, people who could be sitting in class and the answers that we get about their thoughts on where they will be uh, 10 years from now also varies. And uh, now you, sh you would have written what you want to be uh, 10 years from now. And let, let me uh, s tell you some of the answers that I get. So, the long term objectives could be becoming an entrepreneur, becoming a researcher, a construction manager. maybe a consultant or it could be something uh, not really related to the field. It could be that the ob main objective would be to have a happy family or it could be wealth. Maybe the most important thing that a person would desire would be to be rich. So, there is no right or wrong answer, but as a teacher it tells me and if you are a teacher it will tell you about what are the things that the students aspire, something about the entry behavior which we sometimes refer to. 
Now, what we'll do now is, now that you know where the students want to go ultimately, and you know what, where you want to be 10 years from now. Now, close your eyes again. And now when you open your eyes, write down what do you want from this course? Why are you watching these videos? Why are you taking these course? And same, I would ask my students, why are you doing this? Okay, so close your eyes for a minute. And then again, you can put the video on pause and then come back and uh, play it again. Now, when uh, I suppose you have uh, written down what you want. And again, the answers that I get from class vary a lot. So let's look at some of the answers. So the objectives for the course could be as simple as getting good grades or comprehension. They want to understand about the subject or it could be to uh, develop new materials or to understand what can be done in terms of material science or materials engineering and things like that. So it could be that simply a person is studying because they have to, they have to get good grades, they have to pass this course. In your case, it's not like that. Generally, it could mean that you want to develop a comprehension, you want to understand, improve the knowledge and get the basics of uh, materials engineering related to construction materials. And hopefully, there is a link between the two columns. There should be a link between these two, the long term goals and why you are sitting here for this course. If there is no link, then you're making a mistake. You need not have to go through this. And I'm telling you this as I would tell my students that if you don't know why you are here and if you don't know why this course is at all useful to you, then you're making a mistake. We have to understand where we are going and hopefully whatever you do every day will lead you to this goal. So this is something that is very important. As a teacher, it tells you what the students expect from your course and what you can deliver. Now, I also tell my students what my goals are and what I will try to deliver. My long term goal would be that what I teach and the research that I do ends up in something useful in terms of a landmark structure or development of a new technology or the use of a new technology and something pioneering. That will make me happy, say 10 years from now if you look back and see that this has happened. Short term goals, what can I give in this course? In terms of what I would like to give in this course and what I think a teacher should be able to develop in a course should be these. Developing comprehension so that understanding is improved, the breadth of knowledge is improved and that is what we will try to do in terms of construction materials in this course. Secondly, and very important, the analysis. We always have choices. We have pros and cons. There is no clear cut answer always in engineering and technology. So we we'll, should have the ability to analyze choices from different angles. And this is something that we do every day in our personal life. And this similar type of analysis is needed in engineering if you are at the site or you are at the design office or you are a manager of a project. Thirdly, the about to leads on to the third aspect which is becoming confident in decision making. You, after you have the choices, finally you have to take a call on which material to use, which technology to use and how to go about it. And this is something that you will see that has to be done in the context of this course. We have a lot of materials which can be used in a certain application. We have to decide which material to use. These choices become very wide when we go to finishes and fittings and accessories. 
there is a tremendous choice and this choice seems to be increasing in all parts of the world. Now, how do we choose? What do we choose? And how to reach this decision? It's important that during a course, the student develops this ability to understand, analyze and reach a decision. The other two aspects of what I try to develop in, uh, in a course that is taught directly is communication skills and attitude. Communication skills comes through report writing, assignments and so on. This is something that you will have to do your share as far as this video course is concerned. But this is probably as important as the other three aspects. Because unless you are able to communicate well as an engineer, you will not be able to convince others that what you are saying is correct. You will not be able to convince others that your decision was taken rightly. And we find a lot of times that students who are very good in taking exams, in answering questions, they are not able to do well in report writing, in communicating their results or their decisions. So in today's world, it is very important that we develop this ability to communicate well with others who might be your superiors, your clients, the users of the structures that we are building and so on. Lastly, attitude is always an issue. There should be the right attitude to learn. The fact that you are sitting in front of this TV screen or uh, computer screen means that you have the attitude. This attitude should continue. Only if you have the right attitude for learning and for being a complete engineer, one can be successful. And I hope that this course goes to some extent in helping you this way. What are the objectives of this course? First of all, to provide the scientific basis of, for understanding and developing of construction materials. We will provide the basics, the science behind the behavior and properties of construction materials. And we will spend a lot of time discussing the important construction materials of today. We will span the range of materials that have been probably used for centuries, if not thousands of years, like timber, going on to modern materials like fiber reinforced plastics and other finishing products that are coming into the market today and being used more and more today than ever before. Now, in this course, we will assume that you have had some course in building materials before. Say in the first or second year of engineering, assuming that you are a, a final year student or close to the final year of engineering or in the beginning of a postgraduate program. So you should have read something on building materials covering the usage of materials, the basic properties and I also assume that you have had some courses in chemistry and physics. So there will be only a review of these aspects and it will not be comprehensive. Now this course is expected to help not only people who are studying now, but also people who are practicing engineers and people who are starting off their career as a researcher. For the researcher, I hope to provide through this course a review of fundamentals and a unified approach to looking at materials, not studying one material at a time because for research you have to understand why things happen in the material and why you get the properties that you have. Only then you can improve a material or develop a new material. So, a material science approach will be taken here where fundamentals will be built up, reviewed and you go on to see, understand why materials behave the way they do. Similarly, for engineers, 
practicing engineers, it is good to understand the properties where they come from and the behavior of materials. And often as an engineer, you will find, I am sure that you will find through your career that you will come across materials that you have not studied before because this has just come onto the market and you have not had a course which dealt with that particular material. Understanding the family of materials and fitting in the new material to this family, you will know how to deal with this material and hopefully also be able to predict how this material will behave in the application that you are dealing with. So, this course I hope will help you not only as a student, but also if you are thinking of research as a career and also if you are a practicing engineer. So, this is the course outline, it is put into several modules and how you should follow this course is that go through the video, each video. We will try to have a question answer session thinking of possible questions that could come up and uh, answer those. Other than that, there are exercises that will be given for each module and in some cases, we will also try to do some demos or show how the materials look, not only in pictures, but you would see in uh, at least in the studio, we will have the material so that you get a better feel for how the material looks like. But I would encourage you to have a textbook, read material on the web or in your library or any library that you are close to, so that you get more information. This course is by no means comprehensive, we do not cover everything that you should know about any of the topics given here. It is more of a review and in some cases we do go into some depth, but it is by no means comprehensive. So, in the first module after giving the course outline, I will talk about the motivation for studying the science and technology of construction materials. This is again not very common, most curricula will not have the material science explained in civil engineering. We generally traditionally have dealt with material by material, there will be a course which starts with cement, then aggregates, then concrete, timber and so on. But here in IIT Madras, we believe that the student should have an understanding of the fundamentals before the material is actually discussed. In the second module, we will be looking at atomic bonding, structure of solids, movement of atoms within the structure and development and changes in the microstructure. So, this will tell us how materials are put together, what uh, chemical and physical laws govern the development of the microstructure. Anything that requires a microscope is what we classify as microstructure. Then we go on to look at material behavior, that would be the third module, where we look at surface properties, response of materials to stress, failure theories, fracture mechanics will be introduced, we will look at rheology, which is the science of how materials flow and thermal properties which are of very high consequence in civil engineering. So, the material behavior follows from the microstructure and from the examples you will be able to understand why the material behaves in a certain way and what are the fundamental aspects that led to this behavior. Then we will go on to two modules specifically on materials. First we look at the structural materials materials that are used to make the skeleton or the shell of the structures that we use and live in. Before that, there will be an overview of different construction materials, how we make choices, how do we decide to use a certain material. We will cover materials commonly used like metals, timber, concrete, asphalt and so on. We will also touch upon glass, which is becoming a very important structural material. Glass is not confined to just windows and shutters, but also it is being used as glazing, which is a structural component of a building. Then we look at non-structural materials, accessories and fittings like floor finishes, waterproofing, tiles, 
paints, anchors and so on. These are also important because you have a wide range of choices and in terms of budget, sometimes we find that non-structural materials are as important to your pocket when something is being constructed. Finally, when we close in the last module, before I give my closing remarks, we will look at environmental and social concerns. How does the choice of the material help in the impact on the environment? Can we make a choice such that the environment is least affected? Also, we look at social perception of materials. Why do we choose a certain material? Why do people like certain materials and they do not? Beyond just the technical aspects. In terms of how you access this course and how you can use the course, you already know that uh, the website for the National Program of Technology and Science Learning is nptel.iitm.ac.in. So, this course is a civil engineering course within this program. You can view the videos of this course on the NPTEL website or on YouTube. YouTube you would see the videos in lower resolution. Best would be to download the videos. You can download the videos in higher or lower resolution and that way you can see them often and you can see them leisurely, you can stop and proceed and so on. So, the best way to follow this course would be to have downloaded the videos and as I said get reading material to go along with this course and ideally I would suggest that along with each lecture do the reading corresponding to that lecture. At the end of each lecture I give the references and in the NPTEL site you will also have text giving you a list of reading material. Now, these are some of the books that I have used and uh, the first one on building materials is something very basic. Actually, this is, uh, this is the book that I use, uh, the book of P. C. Varghese. What I would expect is that you have read a book such as this before you start with this course. We start from this as the foundation. So, you should have read, you should have gone through in your coursework or by yourself the material covered in a basic fundamental book of building materials such as this. Now, as I told you, we have structured this course from the material science point of view and this was not very easy and one of the sources which gave inspiration a lot was this book on uh, science and technology of civil engineering materials by uh, Young, Mindes, Gray and Bentour and this book has helped us develop this course, it starts with the fundamentals goes through the different properties and then covers material by material. So, this is a book that if you can get your hands on would be excellent. Another book not pertaining to civil engineering, but has been very helpful as course material is this book by Ashby and Jones, Engineering Materials 1 and it is it's an interesting book because it has short chapters and for teachers it could be interesting because the authors have structured the book such that all the material needed for one lecture is given in one chapter. So, there are 27 chapters. So, if you plan the course well, you can deal with all the uh, materials dealt with in each chapter in each of these lectures. There are other books also. Um, another book that I have here on the list is Civil Engineering Materials by Somayaji. This is a very popular book all over the world and this can help um, you in many ways. So, I hope uh, we will have a good uh, course together and at the end of the course uh, feel free to send us feedback. You can do it through the NPTEL site and uh, if there is any errata, we will also flag it um, through the NPTEL site. So, you will know if some things are changed or need to be changed. Thank you and I am looking forward to having you in the first lecture.